Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys a look at the newly released ZT pen. Uh, this is the first in their lineup of uh, several tactical pens, um, and this one was just released not too long ago. So, the model number on this particular one is ZT0010BLK Tactical Pen. Um, so, we'll go through the normal format, specs, overall impressions, um, followed by kind of the details, nitty gritty, and then I do have a few different quote unquote tactical pens for comparison. So, anyhow, this is what it ships with just this little container thing with a kind of display window ish. So, yeah, comes with some product literature, talks about limited lifetime warranty, so on and so forth. All right, let's get into the specs. So this uh, overall length on this pen is 5.3 inches. It is made of aluminum and it has been uh, anodized a, um, a nice, rich, deep black, really smooth, really nice finish. Weighs in at 1.3 ounces and it is made in the USA. And obviously it is a pen and it does fall under the tactical pen roll. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, those are the specs. It does come with a write in the rain cartridge, which is quite similar to the um, the Fisher Space Pen refill. I believe that that is actually made by the Fisher Space Pen people um, for the write in the rain company. So same idea, pressurized, writes underwater, writes upside down. I don't know if underwater I might be making that up right here now, but uh, anyhow. Um, at 100 bucks, there are actually quite a few different um, options in this range, so they are coming in and challenging a few incumbents in this uh, field. Um, but, you know, ZT's quality is there, and um, when they do something, they do it well. So, all right, so those were the specs. Overall impressions, I've actually kind of gone into it a little bit, but um, yeah, when ZT does something, the quality is there, they do a great job. Um, they have excellent customer service, so if there is a problem, they will take care of you. But um, this one is um, nicely made, great machining, nice and clean, fit and finish. Um, excellent retention on the cap here. Um, doesn't even wiggle about really, and uh, yeah, just really solid. It does post on the back. You can hear it snap in there, um, and it's... Uh, Fairly good in the hand, fairly well balanced. I typically prefer to keep my caps off when I write, um, but that's just personal preference for um, better balance and so forth. But uh, yeah, again, it's um, really well made. There are quite a few options in this price range, so if this one speaks to you, um, certainly don't hesitate unless you're waiting for kind of the brown colored one or the full tie, uh, which have not quite been released, nor do we know when they will be, but this year for sure. So anyways, um, let's get into the details then. Now that we've kind of gone over the specs and the overall impressions, and I'm sure they were no, of no surprise to anyone watching this who's had a zero tolerance knife before. So, all right, so um, let's start off with the cap, I suppose. So again, as I said, the retention is very nice, um, very solid, um, better than most, I would say, in terms of just a nice snug fit with that cap here. Um, you do have a really cool 3D machined um, aluminum pocket clip. does have these two screws. Nice attachment method. Looks nice and clean. And it does say zero tolerance with the uh, serial number. Um, so I don't believe that these are going to be limited. This should be a uh, standard production item, but they still put the serial number, which I think that we as knife or gear enthusiasts or pen enthusiasts probably appreciate. Now on the top of the cap, it does say made in Oregon. Um, I think this was a little too much clutter on the pen, um, but with the knife industry the way it is, you know, made in the USA is a huge selling point. So they'd probably be foolish not to market that. Instead of saying made in the USA, they put the specific state. Um, reminiscent certainly of Chris Reeve knives and the made in Idaho type of stamp, but uh, could have done without it, but uh, it's not a make or break for me by any means. So, all right, there's the cap. Um, there is some nice texturing or kind of uh, CNCing or machining here on kind of closer to the, the point or the nib, I guess you could say. Um, fairly comfortable, offers decent traction. Um, 
but I can see, you know, I've already written with it a good deal, but I could see myself writing for extended periods, not really feeling any fatigue. Again, at 1.3 ounces uh, or less without the cap. Um, yeah, it's, it's just comfortable in the hand. So uh, writing performance is going to be pretty good. And again, the uh, right in the rain is quite similar to the Fisher Space Pen, although um, I might prefer the Fisher Space Pen fine. Uh, but this one's close enough that I'm not going to switch it out until it dies, so. Alright, then we get to the main body of the pen or the barrel here. Nice kind of fluted uh, CNC work. Very clean. Offers a nice aesthetic detail as well as traction. So, um, this is designed as a glass breaker tactical pen. So, offers a little bit of traction when you've got it in, the, in this grip here. The uh, fluted does, so. All right, then we come to the back and you do have a uh, carbide glass break. So this does come to a fairly nice point. It is a little bit sharp. Um, here, let me see if I can show you. So it will scratch, um, but you know, that's a pro and a con. Um, this is a serious glass break. So I have no doubt that this thing would actually break glass. Um, whereas other glass breaks I've had on, uh, on different knives, um, it was questionable as to whether it actually break, but I think this one certainly will. So very functional glass break, but it is going to be a little bit sharp. Might dig into your pocket um, or the side of your pocket if you were to sit down wrong. Could potentially put a hole in your pants. Um, maybe, maybe not. I mean, that'd probably be a very rare occurrence, but I know someone's going to complain about that. For me, it's not an issue because I appreciate the uh, functionality, both in terms of a glass break as well as a self-defense uh, implement. So. All right, here is what it looks like when we open it up. Uh, nice clean threads, great retention. It has not uh, loosened while carrying it in my pocket, which is a problem that I had with my Benchmade. I actually had to uh, Loctite it. So anyways, um, here's the right and the ring cartridge as well as a spring. And then there is an O-ring on here as well to keep any moisture or anything out. So. Um, so yeah, the, the, the construction, the fit and the finish, nice and clean as you would expect. So anyways, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, not really much else to talk about about the pen. Um, again, I mentioned before, quality's there, it's a ZT, so really nothing to worry about. Pocket clip does have a really nice amount of tension, um, easy to go in and out of the pocket. I'm not worried about losing this at all, so. And if I haven't mentioned this already, when it posts on the back here, um, it's it's very tight as well, so really nothing to worry about there. Easy to come on and off to. All right, now let's talk about some of the competitive options. So as I mentioned, there's actually quite a few players in this price range uh, that offer the kind of similar materials. Um, as to whether or not their fit and finish is better, um, or it's a better implement or instrument, I should say, then uh, you know that's really up to you. But an apt comparison would be the Benchmade 1100 series in aluminum. This one's damn steel, so it's in a different uh, price range, certainly in different weight, different materials, uh, kind of a different animal. But size-wise, they're quite com uh, comparable. So if you imagine this one to be the aluminum version, the two would be very similar. Uh, I do have a uh, Fellholter tie bolt. Again, size is quite similar. This is a, a better, this is a one-handed operation, which I, which I like, um, but I do like the pocket clip here better. Um, this one does have a, a tendency to catch on to things sometimes, like my shirt and kind of grab the threading sometimes, so. But uh, anyways, here is a Countycom Embassy Elite. Um, this one is a threaded cap, so you have to unscrew it versus the, you know, the two that pop off, which nicer, less work. Um, and then this thing is pretty dang heavy. I don't remember the weight, but it's um, probably three times as heavy as uh, the ZT here. Kara's custom tie bolt, uh, mostly one-handed. And then here is a Bic Atlantis. So a few different size comparisons, I guess. I mean, they're all quite comparable, to be honest. Um, the Benchmade series, I 
I think that the aluminums also have kind of carbide glass brakes. So again, the, the two would be very comparable. There's also Tough Riders in the same price point. So kind of whatever speaks to you. If you're a ZT fan, then go for the ZT. If you're a Benchmade fan, then go for the Benchmade. Um, but uh, that would probably be an interesting head-to-head. -head, so, all right, now let me talk briefly kind of about the benefits of tactical folders or what they are, because I think there's confusion and people for the most part may or may not be warmed up to the idea. Although ZT did bring these out based on um, customer requests and uh, kind of clamoring for a ZT pen. So it'll be interesting to see how these sell and how long they remain in their lineup because ZT is not hesitant about dropping things that are not moving. So anyways, hopefully, hopefully it fares well. Um, but here are the benefits of tactical pens as I see them. One, it's a very robust writing instrument. Um, you know, it's just like any other piece of gear, just like a nice knife. Um, it's quite enjoyable to have a useful tool with you that you enjoy using. So that's what a pen is for me. And between all the gear that I carry, be it a, a knife or a firearm or something, my pen typically gets the most use, even flashlight, more so than a flashlight. So, you know, it's nice to have something that works, that has a good cartridge, that's smooth, that'll uh, work in any condition, you know, freezing temperatures and so forth. So um, a nice writing instrument, something you can depend on, something you can enjoy using, just like any other gear that you carry. Secondly, um, pens, tactical pens even, can go places that knives and guns cannot. I know quite a few individuals who work in buildings where they have metal detectors and security, and they're not allowed to take anything in but a pen they can squeeze by with. So, you know, when you don't really have any options um, and the, a tactical pen is your best option, then it's what you get and it's what you take. So. Um, you know, the, the carbide tip here is, is that can do some serious business in the hands of an able-bodied individual. I would not want to get hit with it, and if I had to defend myself with it, I think it would work quite well, um, you know, all other options being out. So, yes, um, so if you can't carry anything else, you can have a nice pen that also potentially works to defend yourself. Third, it's a great backup item. Um, I carry my firearm and my knife on my strong side, and so I typically have, or I'll always carry my tactical pen on my weak side. So if my strong arm's out for some reason, if there's an altercation, I'm on the ground, um, this will work um, in that instance. So last ditch effort, it's better than anything else you're gonna get to if, if your strong arm is out, so. And again, your, the way that you carry the things you have might be different, but for me, that's what I use it for. It's a great backup item, so. Anyhow, um, and then what makes the tactical bend tactical? Uh, one is going to be the traction and the grip that you get on it versus something like uh, this Bic Atlantis. It's also going to be the amount of uh, stability or impact that it generates, again, versus a standard pen or even something like this that's a nice pen, but uh, it's smooth, doesn't have a pointed end like the Benchmade or this one. So anyways, so that's what makes Tactical Pen tactical. Um, I guess that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Let's go ahead and end it here. So comments or questions, you know where to leave them. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this video was what you were looking for, um, kind of in your uh, decision purchasing uh, agenda. So thanks for watching, take care.